Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Spiliotis and I'm a professor of art at El Paso Community College. And today I'm gonna to give you tips on how to photograph and edit your artwork using just your phone. So whether you're going to share your work online for your classes, on your website, for social media, or you're using them to prepare your portfolios for colleges, you need to have really good images of your work because whoever is seeing it on the other side doesn't have the original there in front of them to compare it to. And you want your images to accurately represent your work and reflect all the hard work you put into creating them. So first I'm gonna talk about best practices for photographing your work. And then after we'll discuss simple ways to edit your images with a free app. So when photographing your work, the first thing to consider is the lighting. You want bright, soft lighting, not a harsh, direct light. Indirect lighting from a window is best, so find a wall adjacent to a window or a tabletop under a windowsill. Avoid having the window behind you because your shadow may be cast onto your art. You can also choose to shoot your projects outside on an overcast day. Generally, most cell phone cameras do a better job with daylight versus artificial light, so take some time to find the perfect spot to place your work for the photograph and you'll spend less time needing to edit them. For two-dimensional artwork, make sure that the piece is parallel to the camera. So hanging on the wall or lying flat on a table if it's a smaller piece is best. Or if you can't hang it, you can also tape it to a board or lean it against a wall or a chair. Then make sure to line up your phone to be right in front or over it, parallel to the piece. If your work is three-dimensional, you want to have the least amount of distractions possible in the background. So set your area up with a solid white or solid black background, whatever complements the piece best. And depending on the size of your piece, you could use sheets of paper or even a bed sheet to create the backdrop. If you have a tripod, you can use it to keep your phone steady. And there are attachments specifically for holding your cell phone, but you can get a good photograph just by holding your phone too. You just want to hold it really steady. Once you have your artwork set up, you want to match your phone orientation to the piece. So if the piece is vertical, turn your phone vertical. If it's horizontal, then flip it on its side. When framing your image, move your phone closer to the artwork and avoid zooming in because that's going to make the quality of the image a lot better. Also leave a tiny bit of the background around the edge and that gives some wiggle room for cropping during editing. Make sure your flash is turned off and then take a few photos. You want lots of options because you want to make sure that you choose the very best one before you take everything down and go to editing. Once you have a good photo, the next step is to edit it. And you have a lot of options here. If you have the skills in Photoshop or other programs like that, then go for it. But I really wanna show you a simple app called Snapseed that anybody can use to quickly and easily edit photos. You can download it from the App Store and put it right on your phone, and then just load your photo into the app to edit. So when we open up the app, it opens to a screen like this, and you would simply click Open and pick the photograph of the artwork you want to edit from your camera roll. When you select an artwork, you're going to see some pre-programmed filters show up along the bottom or the side, depending on your phone's orientation. Resist the urge to use the filters. You want to manually adjust your images so they are accurate representations of your work, not super enhanced. Click the middle option, which says tools or is a little pencil icon depending on your phone's orientation. This will give you a whole array of editing tools that you can explore on your own time. Today, I'm going to keep it simple and show you some basic ones. The first thing you can do is a quick white balance correction, which can help autocorrect the temperature of your image. If I click the WB white balance icon, then at the bottom you're gonna see AW, and you can click that to do an auto adjustment. If you don't like it or think it needs more or less, then just slide your finger on the screen to the left and the right until you get to a place where you like it. Then when you're ready to accept it, just tap the check mark to save the adjustments. So this image was taken at an angle. Now you can fix this and get a nice straight rectangular image by clicking on the tools and then selecting the perspective tool icon. I'm gonna use the free mode and just use my finger on the screen to pull the edges up and out and make the edge of the image as straight as possible and parallel to the sides of the screen. 
The grid really can help you match that up and then click the check mark to accept those changes. At this point, you might wanna crop off extra white areas of the paper or to frame your 3D artwork a little better. So just select the tools crop icon and then move the corners to where you want the image to be cropped. Then select the check mark to save the changes. Now that it's cropped, I wanna go through and tune my image. So select the tune icon, which is the first icon. And in the tuning icon, it has all the basic features you might be kind of familiar with from your phone's photo apps. Saturation is the vibrancy of the color, and if something is black and white, you don't want to have any saturation. So you should select it and then drag your finger all the way to the left. That will make it look like a black and white image. Now we can adjust our brightness and contrast. You'll likely need to toggle back and forth between these. So after selecting brightness, just start to drag on the screen and you can see moving towards the right will get brighter, moving towards the left will make the image darker. And then by adjusting the contrast feature, it will adjust the amount of difference between your darks and your lights. So for a black and white image, contrast is very important, but be careful in adjusting too much on the contrast or brightness because it will make you lose marks or other information in your image. If you feel like you're losing too much information, then you can adjust the highlights because that will just affect the lightest parts of your picture or the shadows because it'll just affect the darkest parts of your picture. Once you're done with your image, click the check mark to save all the adjustments. And now it's time to save your image back to your camera roll. Click on the export option at the bottom or the share icon, depending on your screen orientation, and it will give you options for saving. I'm gonna choose save a copy, and this will save a new file with my adjusted image. Now we can compare the original and edited photos. Now let's see how these edits could work on a color image and a three-dimensional artwork. All right, let's try to find one image that's in color to see the options we have. So first off, we've got to crop some of these edges. Now I can see when I try that, it's not completely straight. So I'm gonna go back and use the perspective tool to pull that corner out and then go back and crop it. Now, this is a beautiful painting, but I can tell it might be a little light or washed out. So I'm gonna go into my tuning again, and I'm just gonna play back and forth with saturation. Now, here I don't wanna go all the way down because it's gonna bring it into a black and white photo. And we wanna pull those colors out a little bit. Now look at how the saturation can make those colors a little bit more vibrant, but nothing that's too far away from what the artist intended their work to look like. I'm gonna go in and create a little bit of contrast first, and then I'm gonna go back to my brightness. Now, keep in mind as you're editing that you don't wanna lose the detail of the brush strokes or the colors. So it's all about taking time to see what the image truly needs. I'll adjust the highlights a little bit, but what I think it really needs is the warmth to be adjusted. We don't want the whites to be too creamy or too blue. And then I think I can better adjust the highlights. All right, so I'm ready to save it. I'm gonna go ahead and press the check mark and then save this image as a copy. Then we can go back and see the before and after. I'm gonna use the same steps to fix up my sculpture image. So let's open it in Snapseed. So for the first thing, let's just do a quick auto white balance adjustment. Then we can go back and crop it because there's a lot of focus on the background and it's kind of distracting for the sculpture. Now we can fine tune the image a little bit more. We can go back and adjust the saturation and then let's give it a little bit more contrast and brightness to make the three-dimensional form stand out more. Then we can adjust the highlights and shadows for a little bit more fine tuning. And let's take out a little bit of warmth because it has kind of a yellow tint to it. Then when we're finished, we can go ahead and save it as a copy and compare our two images. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. 
I hope this tutorial is able to help you accurately represent your work and put the best images out there.